going to work an example of an inequality problem involving the static friction force. And this problem can be found in the Knight textbook, Chapter 5, Problem 71. And I've copied the diagram for that problem here. Um, the goal of the problem is to find the maximum pulling force that can be applied to this box on the bottom so that the box on the top does not slide relative to the bottom block. So this is a net force problem and so we need to uh, start out by um, identifying a coordinate system. I'll just put that for my x and y directions we need to identify the direction of the object's velocity and acceleration. Both blocks are moving to the right, so their velocity vector is to the right. There's going to be a net force applied to the right, which is going to cause uh, an acceleration to the right. So there's my acceleration vector for both objects. The objects are going to remain connected. The goal is so that there is no sliding. And so in that situation, they, they're kind of moving as a unit, and they will both have the same velocity and the same acceleration. So um, we're going to draw the force diagram now, one for each mass in the problem. So we're going to do the forces on the mass on the bottom, forces on the mass on the top. So we'll start with mg, m of the bottom block times g. Um, and then after we do that, we just need to look at the picture and identify um, anything that's touching that bottom block will, by definition, be exerting a contact force. So we can see that there is some kind of a rope or something pulling to the right. I'm going to call that F pull. That's a force. Uh, the, the table underneath is in contact with this bottom block, so that's exerting an upwards normal so I'll call that N of table. This is a table. Uh, the block on top is also exerting a normal force. It's pushing downwards. I'm going to draw that kind of side by side with the mg force. So that's a normal force from the top block. Uh, the problem says that there's no friction between the table and the bottom block. So um, if there were, then there would be a sliding friction force, a kinetic friction force, opposite to the sliding direction of the bottom block. But we're not going to put that. And let's see, finally, um, you know, if the top block is not going to be sliding across the bottom block, then uh, there is going to be some kind of a friction interaction between those blocks. So we're going to need to put a frictional force coming from the top block. Uh, let's come back to that. I think it's going to be a little bit easier to think about the friction force acting on the top block first. And then, we'll, then we'll think about the bottom block. All right, so we're not done with this force diagram. Let's go over and do this one. So if I'm thinking about the top block, I've got mg of the top block. Then uh, I've got the normal force from the bottom block holding up the top block. And then finally, if there's going to be an acceleration to the right for that top block, well, something has to be exerting a force in the direction of that acceleration. And the, the static friction force, by definition, uh, exists when there's no sliding, but there would be a tendency to slide if there were no friction. So uh, if there weren't any friction and we pulled this bottom block, you can, you can see that the top block would just remain at rest because nothing would be, there's not any friction, nothing is exerting a force left or right on that top block. It would remain at rest. It would slide, although it's remaining at rest, relative to the bottom block, which would be moving to the right, the top block would be sliding uh, to the left side of that bottom block. So by definition, the static friction force is opposite to the direction of the relative motion or the sliding that this top object would experience if there were no friction. It would be sliding 
it would actually be remaining at rest relative to the table, but that is sliding towards the back end of the bottom block as the bottom block is moving to the right. So static friction must be opposite to that direction of sliding. So this is to the right is the direction of the static friction force on the top block. Okay? Another way you know it has to be to the right is because something's got to be accelerating that top block to the right. Otherwise, it would remain at rest, and we want it to not slide. So the static friction force is what causes that acceleration. All right. So the static friction force on the top block is towards the right. Uh, that's exerted by the bottom block. Well, by Newton's third law, the top block must be exerting a friction force on the bottom block. They, they friction each other, and so the Newton's, these are Newton's third law pair forces. The force on the bottom block must be towards the left, opposite to the force on the top block. So that's a static friction force from the top block. But those are equal, Fs on the top, excuse me, Fs on the bottom block by the top block must equal Fs on the top block by the bottom block by Newton's third law. All right, there's our force diagrams. Um, another way to think about it, if you want to explain the direction of this static friction force on the bottom block, you could say that um, the bottom block which relative to the table is moving to the right. Um, if there were no friction, if there were no friction, the top block would remain at rest. The bottom block would be moving to the right. The bottom block would be sliding rightward relative to the top block. Static friction acting on the bottom block must be in the direction opposite to the direction that the bottom block is sliding. It's sliding to the right. Static friction is opposite to that. Uh, we're going to do our net force equations now. So let's do the, um, let's see, uh, just for completeness, I'm going to do x and y for both the bottom and top blocks. So F net x on the bottom block has got to be F pull positive direction minus static friction force of the top block in the negative direction. That must equal M of the bottom block times A. All right. Uh, F net in the Y direction on the bottom block, that must be N of table minus N from the top block minus M of the uh, bottom block, excuse me, times that must equal M of bottom block times A in the Y direction. I should put a subscript. This is A in the X direction. Of course, A in the Y direction will be zero. <clears throat> so that's for the uh, bottom block. I'm going to do the same thing for the top block. Force diagram. View here. Let's do it like this. So, F net X is just static friction force from the bottom block, which is equal to mass of top block times A in the X direction. And this A will be the same as the acceleration of the bottom block because they're not going to slide relative to each other. F net in the Y direction, this is for top block. N of the bottom block minus M top G. That's equal to M top times A Y of the top. That's zero. Okay. All right, our goal is actually to find out something about this pulling force. So we're going to have to use our 
net force equation here. Bottom block, that's what tells us something about the pulling force which is acting on the bottom block. All right, so we're going to have to solve for that. We're going to have to know something about the acceleration. We're going to know, have to figure out what that is, uh, or at least a formula for that. And the problem actually tells us the masses. We'll put the numbers in at the end. Okay. Um, but we also would need to know something about this, this uh, static friction force here. So, um, well, the static friction force acting on the bottom block we know is the same as is equal in magnitude to this static friction force acting on the top block. All right, so what we're going to do next to, is simplify our equations. So we're going to take this net force equation for our top block, and we're going to sub in to uh, we're going to take that static friction force, and we're going to sub that in for Fs on the top block. Excuse me, Fs caused by the top block on the bottom block. All right, so let's rewrite this net force equation for our um, bottom block. I'm just going to rewrite it on the next page. That was F pull Fs from the top block M of the bottom block times Ax. We're going to sub that in. So I have F pull minus m of the top block times ax is also m of the bottom block times ax. Okay? These are equal by Newton's third law. These two forces are equal. Okay? So now, um, well, I can, can uh, find out something about the acceleration, right? So I'm going to add Add m top ax to both sides. I get f pull on the left side is m bottom ax plus m top ax. Factor out m bottom plus m top times ax is f pull. Okay. <clears throat> So if I know the masses, and I know the acceleration, then I could find something about the uh, pulling force. All right. If you read the problem statement carefully, what it actually wants to know is find the maximum F pull so that there's no sliding of that top block. The top block can't slide. Whenever you see a problem with the word maximum or minimum, that suggests the answer is going to need to be in the form of an inequality. Right? And so, um, when we have static friction, we have the static friction inequality for the magnitude of any static friction force. That is, the static friction force must be less than or equal to the coefficient of static friction force times the normal force. So we have two surfaces in contact. They're exerting a normal force on each other. The static friction force cannot be greater than that coefficient of static friction times the normal force. All right, so what we need to do to find the maximum F pull is we need to sub in, so the rule with inequalities is you can't sub an inequality to an equation. You cannot sub an inequality into an equation. Sorry, I'm going. Because when we sub things in, like we did up here, we could sub in Fs bottom is M top times A. We could sub that in. Well, that's because these guys are equal. So 
So when we know two things are equal, then we can sub in one for the other. But an inequality is not an equal sign. It's a less than sign. So we're not going to sub this into an equation. Instead, what we need to do, we must sub from an equation to an inequality. This is how we work with inequalities with algebra. So what we need to do, again, the goal is to find the maximum f-pull. We know something about the maximum static friction force. <clears throat> so we're going to use our equations from our net force equations and sub them into our inequality to find a new inequality, which is what we're trying to solve for, a new inequality involving f-pull. Okay. So we need to sub in something for fs and sub in something for n. And so, okay, well, the easiest way to do that is to go back to our net force equation. I'm going to go back up here, and I know that that static friction force acting on the top block is equal to the mass of the top block times its acceleration. That's an equation. Those are equal to each other. So I can sub in this for fs. Similarly, from my y equation, uh, let's see, the net force y is 0. So I know that the normal force of that bottom block on the top block must equal to m top g. Put a box around that. That's the only way that n minus mg can be 0. So that's an equation. So I could sub in mg for a normal force acting on the top block, and I can sub in m top a for the static friction force. And that's what I'm going to do. Let's see if I can... I can't quite get everything on one page, so let me repeat this on the next page. I've got fs from the bottom block acting on the top block equal to m top a. I've got normal force of the bottom block acting on the top block equal to m top g. And I've got static friction force acting on the uh, top block from the bottom block is less than coefficient of static friction times n of bottom on top. All right, so one more time. I can sub in for fs, something that equals fs. And I can sub in for something that equals normal force. That's the idea. All right, so on the left side, I get m top a is equal to this. Must be less than or equal to coefficient of friction times m top g. Great. M top cancels out, which is kind of neat. So now the acceleration must be less than coefficient of friction times g. Let me just add one other, some words here to, to kind of help the logic. This inequality here is the condition to not slip. As long as static friction force is less than that amount, there will not be slipping. So we can kind of continue that logic. This is the condition, as long as we're following the rules of algebra, all of these other inequalities are the condition to not slip. So we could imagine this ax less than coefficient times g. That would be the maximum acceleration we could have to not slip. Well, what we want to know is the maximum f pull. Okay. Well, we're almost done. If you go back over here, found that the pulling force is also equal to the total mass of both blocks together times their acceleration. We derive that from their net force equations. So that's useful because now A must be F pull over that total mass. So I'm going to sub in for AX, F pull divided by 
m of the bottom block plus m of the top block. That, that's an equality, an equality. That expression must be less than coefficient of friction times g as a condition to not slip. Therefore, f pull, I'm going to multiply both sides of this inequality by a positive number. These masses are positive numbers. When I multiply both on an inequality by positive numbers on both sides, that doesn't flip my inequality. So that must be less than or equal to m bottom plus m top, all that times coefficient friction times g to not slip. Okay. And so if f pull must be less than that expression so that the top block doesn't slip, then this must be, this is the maximum value of f pull. to not slip. That's, that's our interpretation of this expression. F pool must be less than that. So therefore, this must be the maximum value. F pool could be any value less than that. All right, putting in numbers, F pool must be less than or equal to, well, in the, in the problem, it says that the two masses are two kilograms each. So two plus two is four kilograms. It says the coefficient of friction is 0 0.35 and it's it and we know that g is 9.8 meters per second squared so f pull must be less than or equal to 14 newtons in order for the top block not to slip so we've gone through all the steps of an inequality problem again when, when we have static friction uh, and we have a problem that's asking us to find the maximum value of something or the minimum value of something. We need to be able to operate with the static friction inequality and substitute into that from some, some equations that we find. And the equations are going to come from our net force equations. And then we just use the rules of algebra to find our final inequality. All right, I hope we learned how to do an inequality problem with static friction.